What will we find when we go into space? Is there alien life out there, or are we alone in the universe? We will have to boldly go, where no one has gone before. Welcome to the Origins Project at ASU. I'm Lawrence Krauss. The Origins Project was designed to explore the deepest questions that humans have ever asked. We're bringing together the world's greatest minds, the most amazing group of public intellectuals and scientists that's ever been on one stage at one time. In this massive 3,000 seat auditorium where they can interact with each other and the public like never before. Science! We have this dilemma that our soon descendants may see things from a hilltop across which we can't see now. Science is more than a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking. When I see a kid open up his or her eyes and say, oh my God, this is spectacular, it feels great. And here to present the Dear Aliens Award, Professor Stephen Hawking. Science is hard, but it's worth it. It's fascinating, it's enthralling. Scientists see science as an adventure, and that's why these are adventure stories about discovery and about the thrill of discovery. And the geek shall inherit the Earth. This is just the beginning. It is certainly one of those uh, critical questions that we all ask ourselves as young children. Uh, Mommy and Daddy, where did I come from? You need to have a public that's at least willing to engage with the ideas and really reevaluate and think about things. It's ironic, I think, that science at this point finds itself in the position of a messenger who is about to be killed because of the message that he has delivered. The uh, re restoration of science to its right place is basically a declaration that we should follow the evidence wherever it leads us. The number of possibilities explodes from there. How would you respond so people say, look, we don't understand the origin of life on Earth, therefore, God must have done it. Even theologians don't buy that. I mean, it's what they call a God of the gaps uh, argument. Before Darwin came along, the whole of life was one big gap. I mean, the beauty of what Darwin did was to show how you can get godlike things, I mean, complicated things like human brains, starting from almost nothing. When we think about reducing prejudice, I think uh, one of the reasons why we've been as unsuccessful as we've been uh, is because people don't aren't recognizing, in fact, the challenge of it. Other species maybe are required to think of their in-group as the people who are most closely related to them, but we don't have to think that way. The idea of size, sometimes it's a big person, darker skin, the threat mechanism kicks in because of the otherness. I think we need to use science and empirical knowledge to help us overcome ourselves. Over the weekend in Beijing, air pollution was literally off the charts. I'm concerned that unless there's a dramatic turnaround, I think we're in terrible, terrible trouble. We're, we're entering a CO2 trap. The estimates are that if we stay on business as usual, we could lose as many as 20 to 50 percent of the species on the planet. This is a very big problem. It's much bigger than whether or not you take the bus. What's more important is to actually understand this and help spread the word about it. The future isn't something that happens to you. The future is something that you build. Conjuring is the only absolutely honest profession. The conjurer promises to deceive and does. If you thought what I was doing was real a few minutes ago, that wouldn't be a magic trick. That would be religion. The insidious thing about dissonance reduction is that it is largely an unconscious mechanism that allows us to lie to ourselves to preserve our opinion of ourselves. Now in this country, this is a monthly occurrence. A preacher or a politician who's taken a strong stand against homosexuality gets outed, whether it's in a men's room in the Minneapolis airport. <laughs> The part of the universe that we've been dealing with for millennia is actually a small part of a much larger whole, a multiverse. The goal is to arrive at those elementary laws of nature from which the cosmos can be built up by pure deduction. With the Higgs, 
um, we think we can connect all of the phenomena at the big scale and the small scale. And I think as we continue to learn about the nature of the dark sector of the universe, 95% of the universe, it's hard to imagine that there aren't going to be a lot of details uh, in the dark sector that we can't even imagine. And it's wonderful to see how science progresses that way. The confusion that we're all living in now, 20 years from now, will just seem obvious. Entertainment is not a bad word. What is really spectacular is when you can take high-level science and apply storytelling. All you have to look at is what is going on in this stage tonight. This is entertainment. I think fun and entertainment are overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I want and I need the artist to take me to new places. And the new place Van Gogh took me is not the sky as it is, but the sky as he felt it. And with this PB&J, this passion, beauty, and joy, we can, dare I say it, change the world! Science is a vital part of our culture. That's been demonstrated over the last five years by the public's incredible interest in these ultimate questions that the Origins Project has raised. We look forward to working with you long into the future, and we hope the best is yet to come.